154 pounds. Professional record, 37 victories, including 31 knockouts with only two defeats and one bout even. From Accra, Ghana, the former welterweight champion of the world, Ike Bazooka Cote. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black with purple. Official weight, 153 and one half pounds. Professional record, 37 victories, including 28 knockouts with only two defeats. From Atlanta, Georgia, the former two-time world champion, Vernon, the Viper Forest. Good evening, gentlemen. You received the rules earlier in the night. I expect a nice, clean fight. Touch gloves. Good luck to the both of you. Vernon, be a sport and touch gloves. Vernon, I'm telling you to touch him up. Let's go. Don't start. Don't start. I haven't seen that one uh, in a while or, or even before. Uh, Forrest is on edge. He knows that this could be his last stand. Let's go. Same goes for Corte. I know Corte has got to be encouraged after the results of the last fight where the aggressive fighter moving forward, which was only in this case, was successful, so it's going to be encouraging for him. Question one in the first round is, how well and how frequently does Vernon Forrest use his left hand? Does he extend the jab? Is he assertive with it? He certainly starts out using the jab as though he plans to fight his conventional fight, jab and try to get in the right hand behind it. Forrest claims that because of the shoulder injuries and the protection he's had to achieve, his left hook is better than it used to be. Hard to figure exactly why. You saw Quarte land a solid left hook in the early going. Hooking off the jab is something new in Ike's game. Well, I tell you what, Brenner's going to have to be effective with that left jab. He's not going to have to have, have a weak, if he has a weak left hand, he's going to have problems with Ike, because Ike is going to crowd him right now, and he's going to have to hold him off. Forrest winning the, wearing the same trunks he wore when he fought Shane Mosley in this ring four years ago. Keep those punches up. Mark Breland. Now training Vernon Forrest. They're in their second fight together. He says if you watch Quarte, you'll see that he often has to jump, let his back foot leave the ground in order to land that jab. That if Forrest can move effectively from side to side, Quarte will never be able to keep the back foot on the canvas and maintain leverage on his jab. But Quarte's jab is still a short jab. He doesn't shoot it from way out. He gets very close before he shoots it, and he pushes so much power on it that it's very hard to get away from it. And already gets... Vernon is starting to fall with the left hand instead of sticking it out there assertively. Break. Right, Break. and that's going to be a big problem. Vernon's got two of the best boxing minds in his corner over there in having two former champions, Mark Breland and, and Buddy McGirt. McGirt, which in both were smart fighters and former world champions. Forrest trained for his last fight in Atlanta. Mark Breland said we had to get him out of Atlanta. Too close to home, too many friends, too many distractions. They took him to McGirt's gym in Vero Beach, Florida, which is nothing if not quiet. Good left hook by Quarte again. Forrest looking to land the right hand to change this fight. Uppercuts, wild rights. Quarte adding effective left hooks to that bazooka jab here in the first round. I think he's throwing an unusual number of right hands. Isn't he a manual for a yeah. boxer like him? Yeah, you know, in fact, even though Brandon is doing pretty good, you know, look like the fight is moving along the lines of Quarte, where he's going to be more effective with his physical strength because Brandon is not moving too much and not using the left jab enough. Come on, stop holding. Time! When we go to Ike Quarte's corner, where they speak his tribal language, Ga, our interpreter is Arfori Anur. Yeah, Ike. The, tra the trainer is. Yeah, the trainer is telling him to, uh, to to keep his eyes up. He's doing fine. He's doing very fine. He has to be faster and be first. He should he should go for the body. 
hold him down and don't jump. Don't jump with your jab. Good work, man. Very good. Keep the head moving, chat. Forrest finished with instructions from Breland and McGirt with 25 seconds to go between rounds. Stands up to wait. Combi box numbers in round one. Quarte 15 out of 38. Forrest 16 out of 89. Forrest threw 56 jabs in the first round, but landed only five. He begins the left hand in the second round with a hook and a jab. So far, Quarte has been eluding Forrest's jab, getting close enough to throw both his jab and his left hook. Freeland insisted when they trade jabs, Vernon's will get there first. Moments ago, they traded jabs. Quarte's got there first. Good uppercut by Forrest. Terrific left by Quarte inside. Well, I think that the fact that they're fighting at a distance when the punches are coming off, which is very effective, more so for Quarte, because he's much more effective with those short punches. And he's getting much closer to Vernon than he should be. Vernon is not maintaining the distance that he should. And Vernon is not using his left hand effectively to keep Quarte away. What's it over, Vernon? Forrest with a left hand body shot, a right hand over the top, but frankly, the jab just doesn't look stiff. No. Quarte, Quarte is putting a lot of pressure on similar to Omar, but the difference is Quarte can punch a lot more effectively. But I don't know if Quarte has the stamina going down the stretch of Aoma. Or the, or the will. I mean, I, 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 one thing that you can never question on Cassie Muma is his will and heart. Quarte, in both the Deloy and Vargas fights, seemed in some instances to be more interested in complaining about the decision than in really asserting himself down the stretch. Well, and it also has a little to do with age. Can they maintain this oh, pace? Terrific left hand inside by Quarte and then a right hand over the top. He is landing with considerably more impact than Vernon Forrest in this round. You know, I found myself wondering earlier whether these would have been better fights if the two younger guys fought the two older guys. <laughs> But these old guys are, are fighting at a pretty good pace so far. Quarte ducking inside. Forrest partially blocks the right hand and walks away. Quarte coming back with that left hook, which has been effective in the early going. Yeah, he's, he's, he's making Vernon fight right at the distance he wants him to fight at. But Quarte still pulls his head up very high. Every time he punches, he leaves his head straight open. But he's got Vernon's mind so much on survival that Vernon's not even taking advantage of that. Quarte is simply backing Vernon up with hard shots. Mostly left jabs and left hooks. And Forrest sometimes has a look of desperation as he tries to gain space and throw his right hand. When Ike Quarte likes the way a fight is going, he will grin at his opponent. If this keeps going this way for a couple of rounds, you're going to see Quarte smile. Right here, you can see them fighting and exchanging at the close distance where Quarte's shorter, more compact punches are much more effective than Vernon's. Vernon came out a little bit overexcited, having not been in a big fight for a number of years, and his opponent was urging him to quiet down a little bit, just go about what he does best. But I think he thought he, he was going to able to knock out Quarte early on. Be, he said he was going to have an easy night. Well, he's finding out it may be a, a hard night's work. Yeah, I think so. He's very unusually uh, anxious, seemingly, for an experienced veteran fighter. When 
Jose Luis Lopez rallied in the late rounds of a tumultuous fight against Ike Quarte, the fight in which Quarte set the all-time CompuBox record for landed jabs. Lopez knocked him down twice, rallied in the late rounds to gain a draw. The combination that worked for him over and over was straight right hand, left hook. I've never seen another fighter use it effectively against Quarte, and he was unable to stop it against Lopez. You know, that's the only concern I have right now about Quarte. Even though the fight is close and maybe moving in this direction, he has a record of getting tired and fatigued and not holding up going down the stretch. And that could be the case here tonight, possibly. But right now, it seems like Brennan is the one that's getting tired and fatigued. Well, in his last three fights before he retired, he was 0-2-1, uh, and, and he was knocked down four times. Morris lands a right hand uppercut. Quarte is hurt badly. Yeah. Quarte grabs and holds. Stop holding the hand down. When I say break, break. By time to when recover break, from the break. terrific uppercut by Forrest. And now Vernon looks to land another right hand. Vernon needs to go right back to where he landed that punch, up between the gloves, because Quarte keeps his hands high, but he leaves a big gap right in between the gloves. So he got Quarte to fall into an uppercut, which was part of the plan. And now you see Vernon yeah. going to work on the body. But he's not going up between the gloves. He needs to shoot punches between the gloves, not to the side. You know, he tried it. Maybe he's listening to you, Emmanuel. <laughs> A moment there it was a classic case of changing a fight with one punch and remember of course it was an uppercut that started the onslaught against mosley in round two good left hook to the body by quarte forrest missing twice with the right hand forrest still trying to end the fight with that right hand and he had a weak left hand behind it yeah and he's and he's fighting too close Quarte has recovered from the big uppercut and worked his way back into the position he was in before, pressuring Vernon Forrest up close. Well, maybe he doesn't I'm trust his now. ability to fight from a distance the distance anymore, Let's Emmanuel. Go. Let's go. Arthur McCampty Jr. has now warned both fighters for holding. We knew we might see some clinching in this fight. You don't want to like to and Forrest seems to be talking to Candy Jr. saying, look, the first warning was against Quarte. What are you talking about? Go back like gentlemen. Yeah, sit down, sit down. And, uh, yeah, are you all right? Are you okay? Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. I'm telling you, when you go in there, you're exposing yourself. Don't expose yourself. Avoid his uppercut. That would, that, would, that would send you out. That would send you out. Avoid it. Okay. Nobody body work this round. Stop looking for the one shot, man. Okay. One shot, man. Throw one shot at a time, man. Here you see Aikwate coming in. Got his hand on the side, expected a punch to come from the side, and instead the right upper cup came right between the gloves. He didn't even see it, and that's why it was so effective. Punch Forrest thought could be effective here. Hobby box numbers three.